Uh, I'm Anna Skelton from uh, Ferro. I'm a virology diagnostician. So I'm going to talk about the AHDB project on tomato brown goose fruit virus survival and disinfection. So I'll give a quick overview of the most of this you've heard, that virus can overcome the TMV resistance genes in tomato. It's uh, spread through mechanical contacts, such as direct plant-to-plant -plant contact, tools and clothing and bumblebees, and it spreads rapidly within a crop. Uh, seed transmission has been implicated, and once plants are infected, they cannot be cured. And good hygiene measures minimise the spread and limit impact should an outbreak occur. And it's also been recorded in pepper crops. Uh, so the aims of the project are to provide information on the efficacy of preventive hygiene measures and disinfection to minimise the risks posed by the virus. So the aims are to investigate the survival of the virus on skin and gloves, to look at hand washing to reduce the risk of contamination in the glass house, to look at hot water treatment of contaminated trays, and look at the survival of virus on glass house surfaces and tools, and also the efficacy of disinfection on these. So the experimental setup that we used was to contaminate different surfaces, whether they be hands, gloves, or plastic trays, with the virus, then to use cotton buds to take swabs from these surfaces and to rub them onto test plants, which were in the Kirshiana tobacco, um, and to then bread bag these up and then put them in the glass house for up to three weeks. The bread bags are to stop plant-to-plant uh, -plant contact so that they don't get contamination wait for symptoms to appear if they're, if they're positive or not. And then we test by ELISA, which is an uh, antibody-based test for the presence of the virus. So first of all, we looked at survival on skin and gloves. So um, we looked at, we contaminated uh, hands and uh, nitrile gloves with infected sap. And then sw cotton bud swabs were taken and put onto test plants at dis different time intervals to check for transmissibility. And as you can see here, the virus survives on both skin and gloves for at least two hours. Uh, we repeated this with contact transmission, so then instead of putting infected sap onto the hands and gloves, we just uh, got some infected leaves and rubbed them gently and repeated the experiment. And again, the virus survived for at least two hours. So we looked at uh, hand washing. Hands were infected with, uh, contaminated, uh, contaminated with infected leaf, as before, just by rubbing. And they were washed for 30 seconds with water, water and soap, water and medicated hand wash, and water and medicated hand wash then followed by a gel. Uh, and the results were, after 30 seconds, all the treatments didn't work, so the virus survived all these treatments. So we repeated this experiment for the same treatments, but at one minute. Um, the results were variable with the uh, virus seemed to survive for one minute using uh, medicated hand wash. Basically, it's not very practical to wash your hands for one minute, so we recommend wearing gloves and changing often. So we looked at um, hot water treatment of trays and disinfection. So we took plastic tray sections and contaminated them with infected sap. And then swabs were taken from these to show that the virus was uh, viable. And then the tray sections were treated in hot water for five minutes at 70 degrees C or five minutes uh, at 90 degrees C. So swabs were taken to, uh, at this stage and put onto test plants. And then the plastic trays were sprayed with Vircon, left for one minute, and then they were swapped onto test plants. So in both cases, the pretreatment was positive, and at 70 degrees C, the virus survived for five minutes, after five minutes soak, but at 90 degrees C, it looks like the virus was denatured, and the Vircon did seem to be effective. So we're also looking at survival on glass house surfaces. Uh, so different surfaces were contaminated with infected sap. So you can see these areas all marked out. And the surfaces we looked at was glass, concrete, aluminium, hard plastic, which was trays, polythene, and stainless steel. And they were swabbed at different time periods from two hours up to four weeks. 
and the virus survives for seven days on all surfaces and it survives for four weeks um, on all surfaces apart from concrete. So we're going to carry this our testing on to three and six months to see how long it survives. This experiment needs to be repeated as this, we've only done one rep of this experiment so far. We're also looking at efficacy of disinfectants. So a range of disinfectant treatments have been tested, including Verconess, sodium hypochlorite, t salt menofluorides, and Huasan and Jet5. We're going to use these at the recommended rate, and then we're going to um, contaminate different surfaces, the same surfaces as before, uh, and then let the, let the virus dry, and then spray the disinfectants and leave for one minute, um, and then inoculate onto test plants. This testing is in progress. If uh, one, the one minute doesn't um, work, we'll look at different times and see, uh, can look at higher contact times. So many thanks to uh, Certis and Royal Brinkman and Rome Technology for providing the Jet 5, the Menofluorides and the Huasan. So in July this year, there was an outbreak in the UK and the affected glass house was cleared voluntarily. And then the clean, glass house cleanup was with uh, formalin bleach and hydrogen peroxide. And the service areas were cleaned with vircon bleach and menofluorides. So we provided swabs to take uh, post cleanup from glass, concrete, aluminium, plastic, and other surfaces. And the swabs uh, were then inoculated onto test plants and tested by ELISA, and no tomato brown goose fruit virus was detected, which was good. So in conclusion, the virus survives for at least two hours on skin and gloves. The um, virus, this virus survives with a quick hand wash of 30 seconds. Uh, after one minute with water and medicated hand wash, the virus still survived. So we recommend wearing gloves and changing often. The virus survives on trays through a 70 degree wash for five minutes, but it's likely to be denatured at 90 degrees for five minutes. Uh, Vircon appears to be effective from the very limited work we've done so far and the virus survives for at least four weeks uh, on all surfaces except concrete which survived for seven days and the disinfection trials are in progress. Thank you.